Weather Warriors, come on. Come on inside. Come on inside. We are uh, having another flash forecast update, and we are talking about the potentially record-setting avalanche of cold air that's going to be moving through the United States around the 29th and beyond. So that's what we're going to talk about. How cold will it get? What is the confidence on record-setting historic cold? Cold Magadan, you've heard all of these hypey terms. Is that going to live up to its height? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. And bring a beverage. You know, these videos go very well with a nice, warm beverage. I like tea. So look at this map right here. This is the anomalies, meaning how much above or below average our temperature is going to be. So this blue area is all going to be below average. It's going to be one to potentially much more than that below average. You can see the entire central western United States on Wednesday going to be below average in some of these areas talking 30 to 50 degrees below average and then out here about 5 to 10 degrees above average. And about a week and a half ago I made this map and I said this is what my forecast was for the 17th through the 31st and you can see how close that is. We're having very below average temperatures out here and this was just kind of an average for this entire time period sometimes it'd be warmer sometimes it'd be cooler but this uh this cold shot coming through is going to make this map kind of look like that so let's uh go right on over the gfs and then i'm going to show you something later in the video called the model sanity test we're gonna have a power play later in the video called the model sanity test which measures how confident these models are on these outbreaks so we're going to go to the GEFS, which is the ensemble. We're going to zoom out to uh, the continental United States here on Pivotal Weather. And uh, I'm going to look at the 500 millibar heights. We look at the jet stream first, kind of get the general pattern. And then we'll look at the uh, actual temperatures because we'll know what, why the temperatures are cold when we look at the general pattern. So it's good to look at this. Now, this is measuring heights. So, you, you know, down here you're going to get warmer weather. Up here in these bluer areas, you're going to get colder weather and lower heights, meaning the air is compressing. Okay, so the heights are lowering, the air is compressing in the atmosphere, and vice versa out here in the, the red areas. Now, watch what's going to happen here. These higher heights, this ridging, is going to kind of squeeze into the Canada. It's going to pinch or it's going to nose into Canada. And same thing out here. And what's that's, what that's going to do is, this lower height area out here, this stuff is going to get pinched to the south and it is going to get shunted to the south very aggressively. And here we go. We're going to go over to Monday. Here it goes. You can see that starts to build in. Plenty of ridging out here. Actually, some ridging out here too. And that, you know, you're know you going to get a lot of cold air that just dives to the south. And here we are on Wednesday. And this is uh, unprecedented and you're talking extremely low anomalies here in the central northern and eastern United States ridging out here and this is the perfect setup for a nice quick cold air outbreak here and that continues through about Friday or so and then the pattern starts to change after that so you can see it dramatically changes as we get towards mid or early to mid February here around the 6th I guess you'd call that early February but like I said in my forecast, late January to the first few days, early February, that's really what we're watching here. So how uh, cold is it going to get? Well, we're going to go to temperature anomalies again, and we'll uh, fast forward this day by day. Now we're going to zoom in just a bit here. And uh, so here's the continental United States, and we're going to fast forward this into the day on Monday and Tuesday. And this is when that shot of cold air comes, and here we are Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Try that again. 30 to 50 degrees below average. A little bit warm out there in uh, Maine, but that quickly changes. Warm out there in California. But 30 to 50 degrees below average, that is unprecedented. That'll break some records. And so very, very cold. And then it'll start to break down as we get towards, again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Still cold, but uh, a little bit less so. And then the pattern's going to start changing as we get towards early to mid-February. Now, what are the actual temperatures looking like? So here we are on Monday. Now, Tuesday, here comes that shot of cold air out of Canada. And uh, we'll go to Wednesday morning. That looked like to be the peak here. Wednesday morning uh, is going to be our coldest day, I believe. So we'll go there. And uh, here we are, 30 to 40 below zero. Okay, that's getting almost to the point where you can just throw water up and it'll freeze automatically. And then we got uh, about 32 degrees right here. This is your 32 
degree line, so where it's going to be freezing. And it extends all the way down, almost the entire continental United States, and even where it's not, it's still pretty cold, So, except for Florida. Now, these models, uh, nine times out of ten, typically overdo this cold air a few days out. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to see just a little bit warmer than what this shows. But I tell you what, it, it's been very consistent. Multiple models have been showing it. So I think that there is high likelihood that you'll see at least negative 15, negative 20 below degrees in this area. Probably some areas, negative 25 to negative 30. Now, negative 40 and beyond, I would say the confidence on that is much lower, even though some of these models are showing that. But I would, I, I would say definitely for sure negative 15 to 25 degrees below average or below zero in some areas up here being negative 30. And again, that'll set some records in uh, certain areas. So potentially historic. Now, we're going to go over to, let's go over to the European and just see if that's showing the same thing. And so we'll fast forward this into Wednesday. Here it is right there. This is Wednesday. And the European computer model, pretty similar with that cold air. It actually has a little bit colder air down here as well. So it, it, it's a little bit farther south of that extent over there. Maybe a little bit farther west for this area out here. It's a little bit warmer. And then also the extent of the cold air going west is a little bit less. It seems like it's a little bit more east with that. But overall, the, the coldest area is going to be in this region. So so far, looking at these models, very good confidence within the circled area right here. So the European computer model is showing that as well. Now, one other thing we can look at is the range. So we're going to go back to the okay. We're going to go back to the first frame here. This is essentially showing the GEFS. It's an ensemble of the American models, several different runs or several different variations, and. It's showing the range of temperatures between those variations. So if you get like a range of 50, that means the model is less confident. That means some models are predicting like maybe zero degrees and then some are predicting 50 degrees. So the more color, you know, the higher the scale here, the less confident the model is going to be. Now these blue and black lines, this is the average temperature between all of those models. So that's a good temperature to use for this example. So. We'll fast forward it, and we're going to go into Wednesday, the 29th. To, we'll go to Tuesday and then Wednesday. That's our coldest day. That's the day we want to look at here. Negative 20 degrees between all of these models, all the way into Missouri, Indiana, Illinois, and uh, Ohio. You can see negative 10 farther south, and then zero degrees midway through the United States, all the way down to Oklahoma. So very cold temperatures. And then the range is generally about two degrees. And then actually, the like I said, that where we had the most confidence was up here in the uh, in Minnesota, North Dakota, and Wisconsin. That area I circled between all those models looked like the best confidence is going to be in that core of the cold air. And you can see about 0 0.5 to one degree variation and change in that area. So pretty dang confident in there. The area that there is less confidence in is the west side of this trough where there's about 2 to 10 degrees differentiation. So that's going to be the less confident area is this area in blue out here to the west. How far west is this going to go? And I said that there was a difference between the GFS and the European computer model. Now, we're going to look at something called the uh, spaghetti plots. This is another thing that you can gauge the model's sanity by here. And we'll... Uh, this is the current right now. So this is uh, right here. This is the 540 line. This is kind of the average temperature in the atmosphere being 32 degrees. So that's going to be right now at the start of the model run. And you can see that all of these different runs are very close together, meaning it's very confident that 32 or the average temperature that 32 degrees is going to be kind of in that area. So watch what happens as we get towards Wednesday now. See a cold shot, and then we're going to see Tuesday. And here's our cold shot right here. This this little wave right here, that's going to move south. And you can see there's less confidence right there. There's more of a spread between the spaghetti plots. It's more confident out here. So the core of this thing is going to be very confident. Watch as this next cold shot comes down for Wednesday, and uh, you'll see what happens here as we get towards Wednesday morning. And when it kind of moves south into Thursday, you can see there's less confidence out here, kind of as that Arctic blast slides to the south. So, but more out here. So, we'll back that up real quick. And what does this mean? So, back that up. 
it just means like how far west this thing is going to go. There's a lot of questions. So there's a lot less confidence over here, but there's a lot more out here. So the everything kind of along and behind that, you're probably going to get better confidence of cold air, but less out to the west. And if we go back to the old GFS here onto Wednesday morning, that would essentially mean that this area out here, okay, you're going to get record cold air. You see that negative 20. I would say that's a lot less uh, certain out there, but still probably going to be pretty cold. The best area for our cold air is going to be kind of in this region uh, looking at these models. Uh, so look at one more thing before we wrap it up here, and we'll go over the GFS, and we'll look at wind chills. I forgot to point that out. And the wind chills are absolutely off the wall as well. You go into Wednesday morning, you're talking negative 50 to 60 degrees below average in some of these areas. So very, very cold temperatures in some of these areas. We'll go back to Wednesday. There it is right there. And again, I think some of this is a little bit overdone, but that is uh, dangerously cold. Anything below 20 below is dangerous. So we're doing that by a factor of three here in some areas. So maybe not negative 60, but probably for sure negative 40 and uh, maybe even negative 50 in some areas. Uh, so very cold. And then how about the precipitation? We'll fast forward this into Wednesday. And the start to kick things off here, we got a clipper that kind of moves through. Nothing serious, but a few inches of snow kind of in that area where this clipper passes with some good wind behind it and very cold air. And you're going to see this thing just drag serious cold air behind it. So here it comes. And here comes that cold air, those blue lines, 32 degree average temperature right there, and plenty of cold air behind this thing. Maybe even some snow out here in the uh, east coast, potentially southeast of the United States. Behind this cold air, there's going to be plenty of cold air to work with. This low pressure system isn't all that strong. It starts to weaken, so really not a whole lot of snow if you get it. But plenty of cold air there, so for any precipitation that falls could be snow. And then here's your deep high pressure system right here as we head towards Wednesday and just plenty of cold air around this high. So very cold air and then the pattern starts to change beyond that. So that's going to wrap up today's video. If uh, you like today's video, go ahead and click subscribe. We release weekly, bi-weekly forecast breakdowns like this, including my state of the weather address where we go for the long range and look into the long range. And then... Uh, tutorials as well. And then also check out this uh, time lapse I made. It's a radar time lapse for all of 2018. Watch storm systems dance, explode, swirl around the U.S. for the entire year in nine minutes with some background music as well. So hope you enjoyed today's video. Share this with a friend and I'll see you soon.